Hi, my name is April. I am the Adult Services Librarian over at St. Paul's Hollywood Branch, and today I'm going to show you how to make Irish soda bread in time for St. Patty's Day. Now, Irish soda bread is a crusty brown bread. It's very good. Um, it's gotten its start in the 19th century in Ireland because they were introduced to baking soda, and it was a way to make quick rise bread for them, for their families, and it kind of expanded, and now Ireland's known for their Irish soda bread. So we're going to get started on it. It's only eight ingredients and it's very easy. You don't have to wait for it to rise or anything, but it's just quick, easy. It gets done in maybe less than an hour, less than 45 minutes, and you're good. So let's go ahead and get started. First, you make sure you preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and make sure you line a baking pan with parchment paper. So we're going to combine our flours, oats, salt, and baking soda. You need two cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of whole wheat flour, half a cup of rolled oats, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and one teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm going to add my two cups of flour to the bowl. And then I am going to get two cups of whole wheat flour. Now whole wheat flour might not be a kind of flour that you have around at home, but it's at most grocery stores. I know Food Lion has this brand. I think it's called King Arthur whole wheat flour. And if you don't have it at home, it's just easily picked up at the grocery store. So two cups of whole wheat flour, and then we're gonna get half a cup of rolled oats. And then you need one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then you need a teaspoon of baking soda. So we're going to mix this all thoroughly. So make sure the flowers get evenly distributed and the oats and everything else. So I usually use, you can use any kind of utensil to stir. I'm using a fork just because it helps me like get to the bottom and like sift it through kind of thing while you're stirring. So, but you just want to make sure it's easily stirred through because you're going to have to make a well in the dry ingredients when you pour your wet ingredients in. Now, the wet ingredients you will need is buttermilk and molasses. And I bet you're saying, hmm, why molasses? Well, like I said earlier, it has like a little bit of sweetness to the bread, but it's not overwhelming. And it's just a really good crunchy brown bread. And I'm sure the molasses and the whole wheat flour adds that brownness in the bread. So my dry ingredients are mixed together. Now you're going to get your wet ingredients together and it's going to be about one and three fourth cups of buttermilk. I'm going to put that in a separate bowl. Now most people don't keep buttermilk on hand unless you do a lot of baking. Um, but as, you, as I said before, you can make, you can get this at any kind of grocery store, buttermilk. Um, it doesn't have the most pleasant smell, but it goes a long way with baking. So one and three fourths cup buttermilk goes in a separate bowl. And then we're gonna take two tablespoons of molasses. And funny story about molasses, I don't know if you've ever heard about the great molasses flood of 1919. Um, I remember reading about it in elementary school, and you know how most kids are scared <laughs> of quicksand and spontaneously catching on fire? After reading the molasses flood, I was kind of scared that there would be a molasses flood where I was, even though we didn't have anything like that, um, where I grew up in Georgia, um, like molasses factory. So interesting tidbit. Um, we actually have a book about the great molasses flood. It's called The Dark Tide. It's in the adult section. You can check that out if you want to learn more about the molasses flood. Um, but it's not related to this, but it's just an interesting read. <laughs> no. 
we are adding the second tablespoon of molasses. Now molasses is very thick and it's slow to pour, um, but it's really good. So. All right, so our molasses was added. Now we are going to whisk this together, make sure it's fully mixed with the buttermilk. And then once we're done mixing, we are going to make a well in our dry ingredients and then pour the buttermilk and molasses mixture in. Okay. So, all right, when you're making a well, make sure it's deep enough and wide enough because I have made this recipe before and it wasn't wide enough for my wet ingredients and it kind of made it hard to do the next step where you have to go around with a fork um, to pick up the dry ingredients while you're mixing the wet ingredients in it. Um, so make sure your well is wide enough, like deep enough for Lassie to fall in. Um, so, so you see how I have a well. Now I'm gonna pour my wet ingredients in. like so. And as you can see, my wet ingredients are in the well and I am gonna take a fork and we're gonna stir it and incorporate the dry ingredients as we go. You wanna do this very gradually so it's not all at once. Now that we have the ingredients mixed together, we're gonna to start kneading the dough. Um, make sure you lightly flour your hands when you're kneading the dough. Flour hands, and then you knead the dough. Now, as I said before, this is a really good bread, and I've had a lot of it. Um, I went to Ireland back in 2012 when I was still an undergrad, and it was a really fun trip. We started off in Dublin, made our way over to County Sligo, and ended up going over to the islands of Inishmon, and we got to see Connemara as well, and then the last leg of our trip before we headed back to Dublin to fly out was in Doolin. Now, in Ireland, it's very common to go hang out at pubs and everything with the people from the village or from your town and the city too. It's kind of like a nice, way to have entertainment and have good conversation with people too. And it was like that when I went over there. And a lot of time they serve soda bread wherever you go, wherever you go to eat, even in pubs. Um, and it's just really good. You can have it with butter, you can have it with soup. Um, it's just really good bread. And 
that's kind of like the culture over there. It's like you go to pub, you know, you have food, you have Guinness or a drink or anything there, and you just conversate. And they call it um, good crack over in Ireland, C-R-A-I-C. And it just means have a good time, good entertainment, um, good conversation. Um, so that's a little bit of Irish slang for you with this video as well. Um, but if you ever have the time, if you have the money um, and everything, I highly recommend going to Ireland. It's just really fun. Everyone's really friendly. Um, and it was one of the best trips I've ever been on. And I really enjoyed trying the different foods, including the Irish soda bread. That was the first time I ever tried lamb too. Um, so, I mean, it's just interesting to learn about different cultures and stuff like that. Um, so, but Ireland's a really nice place. It's a good place to visit um, and have a taste of the local food, like the Irish soda bread and everything. So. But the places I went to, like including Connemara and Sligo and everything, you can try like any kind of food. And almost with every dinner we had there, there was our soda bread or some kind of crusty bread. It was really good. So now while we're kneading the dough, you need to shape the dough into a circle and place it on a line baking sheet. So I have a line baking sheet over to my right with parchment paper. So I'm gonna shape my dough into a circle and not everything's going to look pretty with bread I can tell you that now um, but it's really good at the end the result is really good <clears throat> have my sort of circle <laughs> for the Irish soda bread and I'm going to place it on the baking sheet so I'm also shape it while you're on here and then I am going to press it down into make sure you press it flat so it's about two inches thick so I'm gonna press it flat like so and then Make sure it's like about two inches thick. I usually judge by my fingertip. Um, and so we have a nice flat two inch thick circle on our pan. The next thing you need to do is to take um, a long blade knife and cut a cross into the dough. So I have my knife here and I'm gonna make a cross into the dough, like so. So it looks like four even sections. And then you're gonna place it in the oven um, at 450 degrees for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, you're gonna reduce the oven heat to 400 degrees and bake for an additional 20, 25 minutes or until the bottom of the bread, when you tap it, sounds hollow. Put it back on there. So when your soda bread is done, it's going to look something like this. And when you tap the bottom, it's going to sound hollow. And if you can hear that, it's pretty hollow. So it's nice, fresh, baked, warm. And when you, it's best served warm too. Um, and when it's served warm, you can serve it with butter um, and have it like that. That's what they do a lot of times in Ireland. Um, as you're when you're with your dinner and everything too. Um, but as you can see, it's really pretty and it's really good. It's really crusty. Um, the outside's very crunchy as it's crusty and the inside's pretty dense as well. Even though it sounds hollow, it's a pretty dense bread. So thank you for joining me today. I am April from St. Paul's Highwood Branch and I hope you enjoyed making Irish soda bread with me and that you enjoy making it for St. Patty's Day and I hope you have a wonderful St. Patty's Day as well. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.